Assalamualaikum. Today is day 20 of hours of quarantine. Um, can't believe it's coming to three weeks since we've been at home. And I uh, don't know where the three weeks have gone, actually, because I don't think I've done anything in three weeks. Um, when we receive anything, because the virus can um, live on packaging for at least up to 24 hours, we do make sure that we, uh, once we've opened it, disposed of everything, we do wash our hands quite thoroughly so that we're not contaminated with whatever's there, because we don't know be quite honest who's handling anything so um that's what we do as a family any letters that come in a post or anything like that we wash our hands and we disinfect and and whatever and just to keep ourselves um safe luton now is in the increase it's that these cases of those um suffering with coronavirus and certainly those who have passed away the hospital is just a stone throw away from my house so even though we've run out of milk and put in um and some of the essentials um i'm not allowing my husband to go out or anything like that we made suji today, which mean didn't require anything unusual, or special, in addition to what we what we have, apart from semolina, sugar, and a bit of raisins. I put all that in. Um, so we've had that. So is it's it's one of those times now that um, we didn't have a lot of um, cases in here in Luton, Bedfordshire, and uh, three weeks ago when we broke up, we only had I think that one death. We've had um, I think last weekend seven. Um, that passed away at the L&D um, and then it gone down to four now it's down to two and then recently we've had two just re um, like within the last 24 hours so we are now hit its peak and uh, um, we are going through its peak and we are seeing more and more cases and the reason for that is that people are still wandering around on Facebook for the um, Keeping Luton Safe um, page we had um, uh, some visuals of people who are still going to Dunstable Downs. It is a beautiful place to go. It is. You take your children out and it's area is open and everything. But not when it's lots and lots of people. When we've got social distancing, we know we need to, uh, you know, we need to uphold on that. And here is the millennials, are the the younger people who think that you know it's okay. But when you read um, cases upon cases that say, especially in Italy, I uh, listened and shared an audio on Facebook actually of a nurse um, saying that. Um, um, they don't have enough vent ventilators so they've had to make a decision not to ventilate anyone 65 and above and to give it to the younger people but the younger people bringing it up on themselves you think why are we saving them then the person who who was sharing this transmission he was an, a grown man i think he was um some sort of politi uh, politician um who um was crying his eyes out and he goes that could be my mom that could be my dad that could be and having had the trauma that we've gone through as losing our parents and thus becoming an author one of the things i'm grateful for because my sister was doing a helicopter course today and one of the things i'm grateful for actually is that i don't have to see my parents go through this because they live in london could you imagine not knowing how they are not knowing not seeing them and they had underlying medical conditions and being on hospital where you can't see them and then been told that okay they're fine and they're just sedated until they pass and that's one of the reasons we didn't put my mum in the ICU actually because we knew that she was just going to be sedated until she passes so in Italy because it's so overwhelmed by numbers of cases they're sedating people from 65 and above until they pass away for the younger people the least we can do the least we can do is to stay at home and yes save lives the lives of people who are actually in hospital, the, the lives of those who could be your grandparents, could be your parents, could be elderly, um, you know, maternal, paternal uncles or aunties. You know, just because you're all right and you don't have any symptoms or you're not, you know, you don't have all the um, whatever it is, symptoms, um, asthmatic, whatever they call it. And you have to say, I'm going to on my tongue doesn't mean that you go around spreading it just stay at home why can't you stay at home i've had to stay at home three weeks before um easter holidays when all my colleagues out were a stone throw away from the hospital and i'm at home because i've underlying conditions i want to be out there i would like to be out there i would like to comfort the children in the wards even volunteer to go and say no you're going to be all right hopefully you know but we can't why can't you just stay at home
and I have every right to have a, um, a rant. I, I really do, because I'm one of those task force who have to stay at home. And I'm grateful to be at home, to be quite honest, because I'm doing things that you know I wouldn't have done anyway. But I think about my colleagues who are frontliners, who are key workers, and they have to leave their family, their children. And, you know, they have to stay, you know, many hours away. And some of them have to self-quarantine because, potentially, because they're exposed to things. And we've been given the opportunity to be at home relax sleep you know you, you moan that you're working all the time stay at home and sleep why are you outside why are you um threatening the whole of humanity because it is it's just a global thing and the whole humanity at some form or another is at risk is that 20 percent a lady in america was saying i don't know what her name is but 20 percent of people who are infected who could die who could go in icu and not come out again um and we're taking the ventilators because we're stupid one of the biggest panics I have as a parent, um, I'm, a, I'm a mother of um, an 11 year old who just does jack, you know, just sitting on his chair gaming all day. Do you know what? I ain't moaning. I'm a teacher and I'm saying, I'm moaning. I'd rather my child be on um, gaming so his day does pass and he's actually having more of a social time here of gaming with his colleagues and colleagues of colleagues than he is at school because you hate school he's done his work he's you know gifted and talented or that great adept at most of his subject i haven't got no right wishes with him yeah he's great we do some work at home he's not going to get these opportunities again he's not going to get this time to sit in front of the tv and play so i'm not even bothered you know what i'm bothered about is people like that who's going to potentially infect me and that's my child as well i don't want to be one that parent who had to wait um for her child to die at 13 and not be there to hold her his hand when he's lasting breath and not being able to bury him how tragic first time in history we are saying stay at home and save people's lives don't go to the front line don't do anything don't even use your brain cell like give your brain rest you know give yourself a rest stay home don't do anything and let it all happen so um yeah stay home save lives and save lives of our frontliners they're the ones who are exposed to these patients who don't have the pe gear they don't have masks they don't have anything and yet they're doing their job they're doing what they you know not being paid for because they get paid pittance and the um, the the work and the shifts and the impact on their life is huge even before covid 19 and you're doubling that you're tripling that we're getting people who's retired to come to work who are there in front of people who are helping making decisions a life or death decision you think it's easy when you've got stockpiling and they can't even get in the shops they can't do anything and you think it's funny stay at home stay at home just stay at home